topic and we're having a look at inverse trig functions, integrating inverse trig functions. Um, what we do know already is that we can differentiate uh, inverse trig functions and I'll, up on the screen here I've got two of the results of that. We can differentiate inverse sine of x and get 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared and we can differentiate the inverse tan of x. Uh, we can differentiate inverse cos. Remember that uh, effectively uh, inverse cos is really just the negative of inverse sine. It's negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. So at the moment effectively we can for all of the integrals that look like this we can assume that there we can use inverse sine relationship, even if it's negative, uh, we can deal with that. So I've put those two up on the screen. It, stand, it stands to uh, be the case, therefore, that the integral of the results we can differentiate back up. So the integral of 1 over root 1 minus x squared with respect to x is going to be the inverse sine of x plus c. And it's the same as true of our result for inverse tan. So just like in all of our integration so far, we can use previous knowledge about differentiating to establish that integration rule. Most of the time, however, your integral is not going to look like that because we don't always integrate just with integrate, for instance, the inverse. We don't differentiate the inverse sine of x. There's usually a, a composite function going on. There's a multiple of x, and therefore we have to deal with the fact that when we differentiate, for instance, this one here, uh, we would be differentiating to get this kind of term here. That would be, it would be 3x in here. We'd be multiplying by the derivative of the x term, and that's going to change how the function looks. Okay, so we've got to come up with a, a rule for what happens when it doesn't look exactly like that. It's got the shape of it. What I've done here um, is I've added to it... Um, a little extra bit of information for you to see. So, uh, we can say here that if we're differentiating uh, some fractional value of x, then the denominator, x over a, whatever the, the fraction that we're dividing by, becomes the, um, the constant term in that subcalculation. And for the tan function, if it's x is divided by some constant term. Again, the constant term appears not once but twice in the result. So what we can do is look out for those things in our function when we're trying to integrate it. And we can summarize that by saying uh, in the box here that if our integral looks like that, then as long as we've arranged it so there's a constant term, difference of terms, a constant squared term, minus x squared term, if we identify the value of a, we can rewrite that in our answer. And this one here, the, the tan one, because I've just kept it as a 1 on the top, you notice that up here it's a over a squared plus x squared. So if we think about it being 1 over a squared plus x squared, then we're effectively a factor of, of a down, and therefore our uh, it's kind of standard integral is 1 over a times the inverse tan of x over a. So there's a kind of standard form to remember, and it takes a little bit of time uh, to get to grips with. Um, what we have to do is to identify at least the shape of it. So for instance, if you see an integral, and there's a square root on the bottom uh, like this, uh, and there's an x squared difference of terms, then you know it's going to look like inverse sine. If you see that there's an integral uh, and there's uh, not a square root term on the bottom, but it's a sum of squared terms, then you know it's going to be inverse tan, and then you can work out the value of a from there. Okay, So we're going to keep that in mind, this whole uh, box here, because it's got some important information. So, uh, let's have a look at an example here. Um, example 17, find this, uh, the integral of 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared with respect to x. So it kind of looks like an inverse sine. It's got 1 over the square root, and there's a difference of terms here. So what we're looking at doing is putting it into the shape of the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared 
minus x squared dx. It actually happens that it's already in that shape, and the a squared is really just 4. So here, a equals 2, because 2 squared is 4. And because of that, the answer, I'll move that over here actually, we can say that the answer is going to take the shape of, well, let's have a look in the previous slide, it's going to take uh, the form of this here. If I've got 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared integrated with respect to x, it's just inverse sine of x over a plus c. In actual fact, that the answer is going to be the inverse sine of x over 2 plus c. And that's the answer. Okay. I'm just going to take a minute to help you understand why. Uh, you don't actually have to use that standard form, but I'm going to show you kind of what you could do instead. See if we actually think about that denominator as being under the square root, so I'm going to take a common factor of 4 and make that 1 minus x squared over 4 and then take the multiplier 4 out of the square root sign to become 2 times 1 minus and that's x over 2 squared ok so mathematically I've kept all these integrands the same so in other words the 1 over 2 here is the same as a half times the integral of 1 over x minus 2 squared. Now you can see here that that is the, the integral of that is just your inverse sine of x over 2. We've got that in exactly the right shape. But the half bit, you notice, is because when we differentiate the inverse sine of x over 2, we get this uh, result in the box, but we also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function x over 2, which is a half times a half, and that's why uh, we've got the half going on there. So in other words, uh, we could go through that whole process of trying to uh, isolate the singular inverse sine function, uh, but it's actually easier just to try and spend a little bit of time remembering these standard integrals as we go along. So that's example 17. I'm going to quickly go through example 18, 19, 20, 21, which have got uh, similar uh, integral calculations where we're using these standard integrals, and I'll, I'll show you how we can continue to use them.